Hello guys and gals of the YouTube. Alright, uh, this is just a Tesla hairpin circuit. There we go. Oh, it's unplugged. For safety. Give me a second. There we go. Boy, I'm smart sometimes. Alright. Whoa, pretty bright. Now, across the uh, hairpin, I also have a Tesla coil. Look at that. Loud in the globe action. You kind of feel the skin effect. Um, you can see some blue flame. So it's cooking a little too hot. And actually, what's up, what I find amazing is I'm putting my finger right on where that spark gap was, and look at that. Not hot. Maybe mildly warm, but it's like a little above room temperature. Whereas this, oh yeah, that's nice and hot. Still just a little too much. Oh no. Freaking spark gap. Yeah. It's magnetically quenched and it's not really locked into place, so. Here, that's enough. That's pretty minute there. Higher frequency, but not the best tuning. Let's see, come on. Too high. There we go. Nice and bright, much better tuning. As far as the tension, spark gap tension. So. That's pretty much it. Now I'll show you uh, how I have this particular hairpin set up. It's a little different than the standard hairpin um, because of where I'm shorting across. I'm actually, shorting across here and shorting across the primary, and uh, and of course I have my caps in series parallel just to give it a little more because I don't have the most, uh, the highest amount of coulomb force, you know, uh, the highest amount of capacitance. Decent voltage, but not very high capacitance. And uh, I can do the water test real quick, just for fun. I'm trying to get through this relatively quickly. So it's a little warm, but not too bad. Come on now. All right, go submerge in water. And I lost one of the leads. Right there. Let me see. Let me put this down. Submerged in water. As you can see, oh, it's arcing a little bit, so it's not quite perfect. That's why it's kind of going on and off. Yeah. Man, I should have set this up a little better first, huh? Here we go. Let's try this one more time. Submerge in water. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Just like to give a shout out to Mr. Angus Wangus for 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 being the first person to kind of turn me on to the the uh, hairpin circuit. I know a bunch of people have been doing it lately, so I figured I'd hop on the bandwagon and add a little of my own. You can hear my computer is kind of reacting to the RF. Or maybe it's just going through grounds. I don't know. One of the two. But uh, going into the USB. So now that's 
now I'll show you the how I have the circuit schematic set up, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. We'll test the hairpin experiment. All right, here's the circuit. So you have your mains, electricity switch, chassis, grounded. And this is your neon sign transformer, right? The 5 kV in this particular instance. Then you're going paralleled on the spark gap, parallel, uh, parallel and series on these two uh, 10 kV, 20% uh, 20% uh, uh, oh god what is it called mm, overcharge I can't remember what that particular thing is called and it's 350 picofarad I believe they're picofarad they're not the they're not the most they're not the greatest um, and then this actually connected but this is not so then you have your uh, primary shorted across um, then you this is your secondary it's not connected to it at all it's just kind of it's kind of there as you can see there's no connection points and your capacitive top load and your earth ground all right then we go into the incandescent shorted across and then instead of having it shorted like this um, where it just well, I don't know if I can do it but where it just shorts across the top like a standard um, like the standard uh, Tesla hairpin circuit. Uh, instead, we're shorted into the ground. So these are two separate earth grounds um, and they short to each other. It's kind of an interesting principle. That's why I'm hesitant to touch it because it's not, <laughs> it's, I'm not sure if it is truly shorting across, but I, um, yeah, it's just a, another configuration. I did do a short across, but I didn't get as strong a, a, as light. Uh, excuse me, strong visible light, but I will try shorting it across now, actually, now that I set up the capacitors like this, because I didn't set them up like that originally. So I just figured I'd show the uh, the circuit schematic uh, for anybody interested and want to try it, and then you can always add more load to it. If I had more incandescents, I probably would add those as well, just to see how far I could push it uh, and see if it would drop. And that's something very interesting that I like to do. And then obviously, uh, on, on the mains in here, I like to put a wall wart and see what type of power I'm, uh, what type of watts I'm pulling out of the wall. So, uh, but thank you so much for watching, and uh, like always, there'll be more to come. Uh, God bless you all.